The divine flowers of dawn blossom forth. The war flowers of the cause of all. Glittering with dew, they scatter abroad their fragrance. Bring them here, that they be not hidden, nor bloom in vain, that they may rejoice. Hello everyone, this is Itzli Hekat from MichiganUprising.net and today I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial on Mayan mathematics. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about Western mathematics in order to give us a framework and then uh, we'll look at Mayan mathematics to see the similarities and differences. So first of all with Western mathematics we have our numbers going from right to left. So we start with ones, next place is the tens, hundreds, and thousands. Now the symbol for one of course is a vertical line and so if we do that what we're saying is we have one of the ones place now if we put a one here in the tens place we're saying that we have one in the tens place which will give us eleven so you're basically saying ten plus one and so that's eleven hundreds place same thing you have one hundred and so you have one hundred eleven and then if we put a two here in the thousands place we're saying we have two thousand one hundred and eleven now if we go ahead and take this one out and if we put a zero in now the zero here is acting as a placeholder so what we're saying is we want zero hundreds and the reason of course that we have to put zero here as a placeholder is if we don't have it it's gonna say 211 and we don't want it to say that so it's gonna be 2011 because the zero is a placeholder so pretty simple um, but when you go to the Mayan mathematics the whole framework is shifted now instead of going from right to left we're gonna go from bottom to top now instead of ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, we have ones, twenties, four hundreds, and eighty thousands. This is common to all Mesoamerican tribes, um, including the Mexica. And so the Mayan the, the Mayans had the most advanced mathematics because they had the zero and it doesn't look as if the other tribes in uh, Mexico knew about the zero for some reason. And the Mayans, of course, were one of the few civilizations in the world to discover zero as a placeholder. So if we come back here, we can go ahead and demonstrate, instead of a line representing one, we have a dot or a little circle. And this is how we say one. So in this case, we're saying one, one. Now, instead of going from right to left, we're going to go from bottom to top. So if we want to say 21, you have to put a dot here on top of this dot. And if a Mayan scribe were to see that, they would say automatically, okay, that's 21. And they'd be able to process it pretty quickly. And same thing with 400. Now, if you want 2, you're going to go ahead and put two dots, one next to the other. And so what you're saying, just like you're saying two thousands here, you're saying two four hundreds. And so that's going to be 821. So it takes a little bit more time for us to process this because we're so used to the Western mathematics. And we're used to saying, okay, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pretty easily. And the Mayans would have been able to do that as well. So we just have to become acquainted with the uh, the difference here. So if we add a three, a third dot here, it's going to be three times four hundred or three four hundreds, which is going to be twelve hundred. 
So now it's 1221. And then if you put a dot up here, you're saying 81,221. So I know that got pretty complicated there, but once again, 3 times 400 is 1200. And so we're going 81,221. And that's how you would say that. Now, once again, the Mayans did have zero. And the way we write the zero is a conch shell. So you're going to draw a little football shape here. You're going to draw a line down the middle. And the line's going down across. And when Mayans see this, they know automatically this means zero. And so just as zero is a placeholder here, same thing happens here. So we're going to say 80,021 because the zero automatically is saying we don't want any four of the four hundreds. So 80,021. That's how you would write that. And the only other symbol the uh, Mayans used was uh, for five. So if I erase this dot here, let me show you what the five looks like. So the five is just a rectangle. I'm using Microsoft Paint here, so it's not a perfect rect rectangle, but you get the idea. So rectangle rectangle equals five. So five twenties five times twenty is one hundred. So now this reads eighty thousand one hundred and one. And then if we took off this dot here going to and we replace it with a rectangle which equals 5 we're saying the same thing here 5 ones and so we have 80,000 4 I'm sorry 80,105 so 80,105 because 5 times 20 is 100, 5 times 1 is 5, and once again the 0 is holding the place here. And then if we take this 0 out, and we put the uh, dot back. Oh, it looks like a square. Okay, so let's put the dot back. And so now you have 80,000 and then now this is 1 400 and so you gotta remember this is 100 because there's a, a bar here so what you're gonna do is it's 400 plus 100 now so it's gonna be 80,505 so as you can see for us it takes a little bit of time for us to process these these numbers because we're so used to the Western framework but with practice we can uh, we can get it down and we can process it you know as quickly as we can here and so that is um, a basic tutorial of Mayan mathematics it does get a little bit more complicated uh, especially when you look at um, the Mayan calendar but we'll save that for part two of this video I hope you all enjoyed it and you got something out of it thank you for watching